We good? All right, let's get started. All right, uh, we got a lower attendance here today. Seems to be attendance throughout the day. They're not my classes. <laughs> is, 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 are, are you guys already leaving for Thanksgiving this early? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mentally, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, to be honest, I was a little surprised I didn't have more questions over this this week. Uh, like I said, this is is probably the most uh, difficult as assignment in in the semester. So I was expecting some students to, to struggle, and I only heard from like one or two um, students at, at all. So I hope that doesn't mean you're you fallen behind on this assignment. I hope that's what I hope that is not what that means. Uh, because that will make your week following Thanksgiving break painful. Uh, I don't want to make that promise, but that is, that is what that means. All right. So make sure you talk with me before you leave for Thanksgiving break if you're having troubles, uh, because I don't want to make that, that week a painful week for you. That is not the intention at all. Okay? Um, all right. <coughs> So let's uh, pick up here where we left off. Um, and so I'm going to continue to use as an example, I think it was problem uh, 1310. It was the, uh, oh, I always forget what they are. Uh, Space Pirates Battle Pacific uh, example. So if you uh, bring that up, I think that was 1310. Um, I'm not going to redraw the decision tree. So Look at your notes. You should have them there. If if you don't um, have them on the board, um, but uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do one different way of being able to present the information that the decision tree that we're able to discover from the decision tree. Your your text. What calls this uh, risk analysis? Um, yeah, whatever. Basically, what we're going to do um, here is because since we're most of us as human beings are visually oriented in nature and understand relationships better when it's presented visually rather than a number, um, it's hard to. See it's hard to look at a decision tree with a bunch of numbers and probabilities and outcomes and say, oh yeah, that makes sense, we should obviously do this uh, solution. So uh, what I'm going to do is, is we're going to, to make a graph here to try to visualize the various outcomes that we could encounter here. Um, and so the outcome is going to be uh, across the x-axis and the probability is going to be the y-axis in, in this example here. Um, and uh, so I'm just going to label this 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0.6 because there's no more than um, 0.6 probability that any particular outcome could occur in this particular example. Uh, and then I'm just going to do five, 400, 800, 1200, and 1600. Hopefully those are uh, relatively even spaced. I'm going to pull up my graph paper projector for, for this particular example here. <coughs> and then what I'm going to do is I want to be able to compare the outcomes of the potential outcomes that could occur for each of the decisions that we're, we're going to make. Because maybe this visual representation will make it more clear that something really has a, a high risk, high reward kind of uh, behavior or this always seems better than another one and it just pops out visually where the, the decision tree doesn't make that as obvious to us. So let's uh, start with the uh, Space Pirates. Is that, is that, no, Space, yeah, it is Space Pirates, right? In Battle Pacific. 
I am going to mess it up all day. That's right. <laughs> um, so let's do uh, space pirates will be in blue. And uh, Battle Pacific will be in red. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through our decision tree and see what the different outcomes are. So if we look at uh, Space Pirates first, uh, we see that there are six potential outcomes. Okay, so the low, what's the lowest potential outcome that can occur for, for that? If we decide to build the Space Pirate software game, what, uh, what's the lowest potential outcome that could occur? Yeah, Dave. Without competition for demand. Okay, and what, what is the value of that? Like the expected value? For, not the expected value for the node, but just for that particular state of nature. 400. No, it's, uh, that is not the lowest one, right? Oh, I see. We can get an even lower outcome, right? I see. What, what, can, what is even lower than without competition? Yeah. With competition, what's the lowest value we can get there? 200, right? That's the lowest situation we could find ourselves in. What is the probability that that occurs? What's the probability that we have low demand, but we have competition? 18%. 18%? How did you get that? Multiply the width competition times low demand. Okay, so you got 60% that there's going to be competition times 30% that there's going to be, so this is competition, this is low demand. So when we multiply these together, that's going to be 18%. Right there. Okay, so that's the likelihood that we will get that. So on our graph here, just below this 20% mark right here, I'm going to put a dot there, and that's going to be a value of 200. So there's an 18% chance that our space pirates could return $200,000 to us. What's the next lowest result that we could encounter? of this graph, it doesn't matter how we end up with $400,000. We just want to combine both of those possible states of uh, nature together because <clears throat> that's what ultimately matters is how much we make in, in our profit, not how we got to the profit. Okay. So if we consider those, uh, we have medium demand with competition. So that is, again, 60% times 40%, right? So that's 24%. And without competition, low demand is 40% times 20%, uh, which equals 8%. So when we sum those together, we'll get a total of 32% of the time, one of those two possibilities. So at 400, I'm going to do, hopefully, this is about 32% there. There. <clears throat> All right. Does this make sense, what we're doing here? We're just looking at every outcome. What's the next highest outcome that we could encounter after 400? 800. 800, and what, what situations do we encounter that? 
uh, high demand of competition. Okay, so that's 60% times 30%. Or? Or median demand with no competition. So that's 40% times 30%. So this equals 18%. This equals 12%. So we add those together and we get 30%. So just a smidgen under that other one, hardly noticeable, right here. And then finally, what's our highest outcome that we could encounter? 1,600. 1,600, in which case? Without competition, high demand. So that is 40% times 50%, right? For a total of? 20%. Okay. What I'd like you to do now is go through your <coughs> decision tree and add in Battle Pacific on there. Okay, and I'll walk around and see if that makes sense, if there's any questions about what you need to do to add Battle Pacific to this diagram. <coughs> Again, if you were making this for a presentation, I would do what I'm doing here and make sure you do clear demarcation with, with color to make it really obvious. I know some of you only have a pen or a pencil, so you can't do that now. But it, that makes it really helpful visually. the opposite direction since it doesn't matter what direction you go, right? Just as long as you cover all the outcomes. So what is the highest outcome that we can get with our Battle Pacific now? A thousand? In which situation? High demand. Do we have to multiply probabilities in this case? No. So we can just put that in there. A thousand is about right here. And that is 20%. What's the next highest one? 700. 700 with what probability? 50. 50. Right here. So. Mm -hmm. And then the lowest one? 300. 300. With a 30% probability. So again, just on there. So now it's really easy to talk about <clears throat> some of the decision strategies. Like if you've got an optimist, wow, look at this. We could really hit it out of the park here, right? It's visually distinct how far ahead this solution is 
than other, all the other things. 20%, well, that, that can happen, right? That looks very possible, right? It also shows you your worst case analysis. The same thing, right? That's clearly the, the worst case that, that could happen. But you might be able to do a little bit more visual interpretation. So, uh, for instance here, there's only a 20% chance that you get above the two most likely outcomes for, for space pirates with your battle Pacific. So there's a very low chance, comparatively speaking, that you'll outdo what uh, you, you're most likely to do with your space pirates. So maybe you look at the combination of the, this low probability here and the high out distancing here and that person says, oh yeah, that, this, that just cements it. We really should go for the, the space pirate. So, right? It's not as quantitative in nature, other than we used our numbers to produce this graph, but it gives us a different sense of the problem, looking at this visually, than the decision tree did. I think we can all agree that when I look at this, and I look at the discipline tree, I have different responses between the two. Better or worse? I don't know. Different. And that's what we're trying to explore here in this chapter, right? A different decision-making options, different strategies, different ways of approaching it. And not just saying, clearly this is the best. All right? So this is just <coughs> another way to represent it. All right. So, um, let's pick up the same problem now, what we were talking about at the end of class on Wednesday. I want to do a sensitivity analysis. <coughs> Specifically, in this case, I want to do a sensitivity analysis on these probabilities right here. How certain are we that we know whether or not there's going to be competition if we build the Space Pirates <coughs> product? Okay? So I, I want to remind you what we already learned is that the expected value of doing Space Pirates uh, was 724. And our expected value of uh, Battle Pacific was 640. Okay, and so from an expected value perspective, we would prefer to do the Space Pirates over the Battle Pacific. But that depends upon this 60-40% probability and how accurate we are. So let's look at how much we can be wrong with this understanding of the likelihood of competition before it changes what the expected value would be. So <clears throat> this expected value here was two components. It was 60% times the expected value of having uh, no competition, no, having competition, sorry, which was 460 was the node with competition, plus 40% <coughs> times having competition, which was, uh, or not having competition, sorry, uh, 1120. That's how, that's how we computed that value of 724. So what we're going to say is, how do we make sure that this value here stays above 640, even if we're not sure about these probabilities here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to arbitrarily assign this a probability of P. And then what should this probability be then? 1 minus P. Why? Because it's the opposite. <laughs> because, <of> the <laughs> because either you're having competition or you're not. There's no other option. So the total of those two have to be 100%. Right? <clears throat> This analysis gets a lot more tricky when you have three uh, <laughs> states of nature that you have to deal with. 
So we'll kind of pretend like that doesn't happen. Okay? <laughs> so, because this is really easy to do. If you have this probability, you know what this other probability. If you don't know one other probability, what do you do with the other two that you, you, you don't know? It's a lot more difficult to, to do. Okay? So this equation then becomes 460p plus um, 1120 times 1 minus p, or 460p plus 1120 minus 1120p. All right? And what we want to do is we want to make sure no matter what the probability of having, this is our competition, no matter what the probability of having competition is, that it still remains at least as large as our other option. Okay? That's the question that we're trying to ask is how long, how, how low or how high, excuse me, can this probably go before this switches and now this becomes the better option than, than this does right here. Yeah, David. So we need a, so 640 needs to stay greater than or equal to that equation? Uh, sorry, sorry. This needs to stay. Okay. Thank you. We want this value to remain larger than 640. Okay, so now we can just uh, solve this inequality with one, e one variable. It's just uh, algebra at this point, right? So, um, 640 is less than or equal to, what's, uh, 660? Is that correct? Um, and so now I'm going to bring this over here, 660p, and I'm going to pull this over here, is less than, um, that would be 500, so 40. So that means that p has to be less than or equal to 480, 660th. Yes which is uh, approximately 73 Okay, and so what this analysis says is that as long as the probability of competition is less than three quarters. This the expected value would still say that the the space pirates option is a stronger option than the Battle of Pacific. So we have to be pretty certain, right? More than uh, more than seventy three percent certain that uh, we're going to encounter competition if we do this before we switch options here. So that's a really helpful understanding uh, of our decision here. Um, and, and you can see why, because this, because this so dwarfs the other options, we, we need to make sure that this could never happen. 